What's up, world? Welcome back to Shots of Brown. It's yours truly, your host, Shane Brown. Man, we got a legend in the building, man. We got multi-platinum recording artist. Man, this man done wrote for various people in the industry, man. Come from a legendary group, Mr. Stephen Russell Hartz himself. Yeah, yeah. What's going on, my brother? Hey, man, thank you for the nice intro, man. I want to meet that guy. <laughs> thanks for having me man yes sir man i appreciate you coming on brother how you feeling today man i feel great man i can't complain at all man that's good that's good man yeah. hey man i have to my first question bro i have to address something that the whole world wants to know right now uh, um the whole omarion and Mario versus man, how did what, what's your what's your thoughts and feelings on that, bro? Well, you know, I've worked with both of those guys when they, right. you know, I, I produced Mario when he was 13, going on 14. Right. Uh the same with Omarion. I think Omarion was just turning 15. He might have been 14, just turning 15. Okay. Uh like I had six songs on that versus, you know. What I mean, I worked wow. with both of those guys, you know. Wow, I didn't um, even know that. That's dope. yeah, I had. You know, I have several songs on Mario and several on B2K. Um, but, um, you know, I I don't like, Omarion's super talented. So I hate the the fact of any kind of humiliation in it at all, because right. this is the music business. And, you know, uh, the vocals that I performed on B2K uh, were only to help the record become what it was. A huge right. hit so that record. was another you know that was that. another one of my questions. So you so you so you did do some vocals on the B2K album. Well, I mean, every song that I've ever produced and written on, I'm singing on. I'm singing yeah. on all of Mar all of the songs that I produced on Mario, I'm singing on the background. Just listen. Okay. I'm singing, I'm singing on all the records. Every take you down for Chris Brown, I'm singing on that. Wow. Okay. Uh Just Can't Live Without You, Charlie Wilson. I'm singing backgrounds on that. Uh I mean, every song that I write on, I'm singing on the vocals as well. Wow, that's that, that was a, that was a part of the underdog sound. You know, my vocals was a part of that. Me and James Fontleroy and Eric Dawkins, we sing on every record because wow. that's our sound. You know what I mean? Sure. So, uh, uh, B2K wasn't exempt from that. You know, if you listen to God's to be, can you imagine a 14 year old trying to sing a sexy grown song like that and pull right. it off? Right. You know. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, I hate the humiliation part of it because Omarion is talented. Um, he's not the same singer as Mario, you right. know? Right. You know, Mario happens to be super exceptional. You know, I don't sing like Mario, you know right. what I mean? Um, so, you know, for me as a producer, I deal with each artist accordingly. You know what I mean? Like, um, there's several songs that I've produced on B2K where Omarion is singing everything, mm. you know? Yeah. So for me, the fact that I am singing on the song, I hate that people look at it as if it's some slight to Omarion because that's just not true. I mean, when Troop got signed to Atlantic Records, man, Joe Levert is singing Mama Sita with us. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Chucky Booker is singing on "All I Do Is Think of You." Right. So you know what I'm saying? So, so that's not nothing that's out of the norm. Right. It's okay. so normal, bro. Right. You know. So I just didn't like how blue how it blew up in that way, as if you know, because like I guess it's just the stance that Omarion took that he was singing all of this, but I guess that's right. what did it because I'm singing on Mario's songs and it's not a big deal, but he didn't say he was singing all of it. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. right. But um, uh, I did, now personally with the verses outside of that part, I didn't like the verses a lot just based on Omarion bringing up different people. I didn't understand Jeremiah and Ray J. Right, I yeah, just didn't understand yeah. the sound. It was just ruckus. It just it, it wasn't hot, and it I didn't like that part right. about it. I like the guys to go head to head, and to me, it should be a, a coming together of good music rather than right. verses. You know, I understand the verses part of it, but 
if you know, I don't know. If 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 Troop was to do a versus, who would who would who would you see y'all doing one with? Who would you be open to doing a versus with? Man, I would be open to do a versus with anybody, to be honest. Okay. Because I just I know Troop, and it doesn't matter who comes out doing what. You can have more songs, more hits. Troop is gonna get down, down. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really, you know. But I think. We didn't have a long, long run of a bunch of songs. So I don't know, it would be hard for me to pick a group because most groups that I would choose besides a high five or maybe. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I, I was thinking uh, Troop and High Five. Like high five, yeah, because we had about the same amount of time run span you know troop right. didn't last as long as tony 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 even though we came out with tony 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 they had they they had a longer run right so they have more hits right um it would be hard to say but it would have to be a group that we can match as far as the amount of records that we have you know luckily for troop in the in the span that we did run we do have records right but you well, know, y'all definitely, y'all definitely got records, bro. Yeah, we got records, but like personally, I would love to do it with Tony, Tony, Tony because that's who we came out with. But they got so many records, so you know, what I'm saying? they they got. So, but you know, so, uh, so you know, on verses they do, like the people who write, they do, uh, they do do the songs that they wrote and produced on. You know what I'm saying? So your your oh, catalog, well, your catalog oh, well, is strong enough. Oh, if that's the case, we can go against anybody. Right. Because <laughs> I if we get to do the songs that I've written and produced for other people, oh, well, we good. Right, right. <laughs> right <laughs> okay, right. I didn't know that. Right, yeah, they do that too, yeah. Oh, too. you just gave me something new. I didn't know that. Well, uh, shoot, if that's the case, then um, we could go up against anybody. I got a lot of hits under my belt b- by myself. So right. that along with the troop records, we should be fine if that's right. the case. Right. So I would say like um Silk High Five. Uh I love Silk. That's one of my favorite groups. Um, who else? I'm missing somebody. Today. Trooping today would be awesome. Uh that was Big Bub, wasn't it? Today? That's Big Bub. Right. Yeah. Okay. So something like okay. that. I I don't know. I would I like to go with New Edition, but there's just no way we can com- compete with New Edition. They got too many hits. They just New Edition is just the greatest. <laughs> right. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know if 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 you knew. You know, um, Bobby Brown is my uncle, obviously. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, that's my boy. Yeah, Bobby Brown, Whitney Houston. That's my aunt and uncle, man. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah, nice, man. Talking. What's up, nephew? Right. Right. <laughs> yes. I actually met um John John on Uncle um Uncle B's uh 50th yacht party that we had in L.A. Oh, okay. Um, I met John. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's, dope. Dope. He's a real heavy man. Yep. Yeah. So I watched the unsung, bro, and um, mm-hmm. I watched the unsung, and I wanted to ask you, man, did you feel like the group members from Troop was was Troop's downfall, or how do you how do you feel about that? Well, I can only speak for me, man. To be honest, you know. Um, I was I was the leader of the group. And when I say the group, I mean Rodney, Reggie, and John. Rodney, Reggie, and John John trusted my decisions. They trusted my ideas. So um, the downfall of truth was us falling into the energy that was against self. Like um, as long as we stayed away from the down the the self-hatred energy we were okay but as soon as we attached to the thought process of not appreciating where we were the number ones we were having back to back the management we had once we stopped appreciating was the downfall because we had number one records back to back top 10 records back to back all Troop had to do was to continue to make music and keep going. You grow in business. You right. get better in business as you go. You know, So there was no need for us to switch management, break contracts, put those two years in between us where Jodeci and New and B and uh, Boys to Men came. We opened the door for them. Yeah. 
if Troop had came right back after the Attitude album, we would have been out of here. It would have been over. Right. You get what I'm saying? No, that's that's so, another cool. Um, nobody, industry-wise, the industry executives, the majority of the people in the game are waiting for a person like that's downfall. You know, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but when you get a guy that comes in, he's cocky, he's not really... Uh, he's not friends with a lot of people, you know, it, it's like guilt by association. Yes. Yeah, so um, it was just guilty by association. So like for people, especially your own record label, not to like somebody and then you go and sign with them, it's just it's like signing your own death certificate. Right. And see, because I thought because I had such a good relationship with Sylvia Rome, you know, we were really cool. I thought that I would be able to go in the studio and create a great album and the music speaks and like we can go on past us. I figured in my, I figured there has to be situations where the record company didn't get along with a manager. You know, how, how is that detrimental to a career when there's so much of that going on? But in Troop's case, um, the fact that we signed with Lewis and there was no real relationship with Lewis and the record company and he came in and got us a bunch of money. Mm. Yeah, record companies they, don't- They didn't like that either. No, no, record right. companies don't care about their black artists being successful right. financially. So that's you another know? question that I had because I seen on there, y'all was saying y'all had number one hit records and you were still living at your aunt's house. Period, you know what I mean? happily just just happy to be in the music business creating you know knowing that i was going to progress into being able to buy me a home i wasn't pressed by those things um but you know in the music business people have business like if me and you we have a situation and the situation only acquires 150 and i say hey i'm gonna pay you three you right. know what you're gonna do with the leftovers this Saturday when you get the when you get the three, you know what you're gonna do with the other 150. Right. You get what I'm trying to say? Right. So right. when you fuck, when you mess up that business, when you mess up that kind of a thing that's going on, and I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that this is how it, I'm just saying that that goes on. Those right. when you interrupt people's business, you think it's your business. Right. But there's other business going on. Going on behind right behind that business. Right. <laughs> so let me ask you, so when the, so when the new management yeah. come in, when the new management came in, that's when you guys you said he, he got y'all the money. So that's when you guys started reaping the benefits of your hard work. Well, financially, our the first and see, I'm an adult now, so I get it clear. See, the first management knew that they had a teenage group. How do you let hundreds of thousand dollars go into the hands of teenagers? Right. right. So of course we're gonna think something funny is going on because they're not giving your 19 year old tail a hundred thousand dollars to blow off. Right. You get what I'm trying to say? Right. They had a teenage group that was generating all this money and they wasn't letting the money go in our hands to be wasted, Right. you know? I can't say that they were stealing from us because I never, I never experienced somebody stealing stuff from me. Alan bought a house with troop money. Reggie bought a house with troop money. I was the one that had to go out and produce with Louis Burrell to make extra money. You get right. what I'm trying to say? So troop was making money. Right. It, it wasn't a, it wasn't like we wasn't making money and didn't see it. You know, looking back, you know, it's just me, honestly, just looking at my own self. I should have stayed solid to Steve and what Steve stood for. And I don't stand for negative energy and bad intention. Right. But when I switched and Alan brought the idea of Lewis Burrell managing us, my first mind, of course, was no. We already got management. We're on tour. We got a million dollars worth of tour set up. I'm not thinking about going to Lewis for management. Plus, Lewis is my friend and I produce for his record label. I don't want him as a troops manager. Me and Lewis Burrell never had a troop conversation. Right. You get it? And I'm with him all the time. So when I went against that, I have to be responsible for my decision because right. other people's intentions, other people's motives is 
their motives, you know, so I'm supposed to stand strong on mine. And with me having three guys looking to me as the guy that's going to look out for them, I let them down. Right. When I made the decision to go to Lewis against our wanting, because all the, the four of us were not even concerned about going to Lewis Burrell for management, to be honest. Right. So when I did that, I went against my own self. And when you go against your higher self, there's lessons to be learned in that. And this has been a lifelong lesson because Troop never got signed again. We've never had major distribution. We never had another major hit. So it was suicide what I did. Mm-hmm. And it hurt members in the group as well that, you know, of course. After you guys left the major deal uh, with Sylvia Roan, you guys ended up signing to um, the manager's record label as well, didn't you guys? Right. Yeah, because see, now you have, you're looking around and you have family to take care of still. Right. And you have, you have no other record labels messing with you. They're probably all Sylvia's best friends. Right. right. So right. nobody's going to sign you. That's a personal black ball that we did. Right. So of course, Louis Burrell, you know, him, Louis releasing a troop record on his label is only going to up the ante a little bit, you know, for whatever it's worth. And so we just did that for money, to be honest. We did it for money. I did it because I knew that I would still create a great album. And I've always had high hopes. Being the creator, I always have high hopes on the creation. I always think that one song will get us out of it. All we need is just that one. I'm that kind of a person. And it, you know, when you're in a group, it's a collective energy. Right. If the energy is not collective, it's not going to happen. Oh, right. And so that's where you see Troop today, you know. Uh, what was your first placement after that? What would like, um, how was you able to transition from uh, writing and when, when did you make that transition from Troop? Uh, well, I got my first placement on the Whispers when Troop before Troop went gold, I got a gold album with The Whispers. The Whispers was walking by one of the studios I was working in and heard some music, gave me a deal, let me write and produce the song, and I got a gold album. So I got my first placement while I was in Troop. Wow. But after, yeah, and I worked on Jasmine Guy. I had a song with Timmy Gatlin and Jasmine Guy. I did, I was doing a lot of work, um, but my real placements came Randy Jackson used to work at MCA, you know, the bass player, Randy Jackson from uh, uh, American Idol. Right, right, right. So he gave me my first break. Okay. Thank you, Randy. Yeah, he gave me my first break. It was a group called Jersey Avenue, uh, Jacob Lattimore's daddy and uncles. Okay. Uh, I produced them. I produced a song called I Wonder Why on them. And this was this was after you know troop had already damaged themselves and you know i was still writing songs you know waiting on this this prophetic troop album to come back and recover and redeem everything which never happened and my mother was the one that told me to stop holding those songs she was like hey this troop shit is over with man Mm. and you're gonna have to accept it you guys did well but that's just not your all you're talented. You you got a million songs here. Why are you holding these songs waiting to, for you and Alan and Troop to sing it? You need to be spreading your songs out. You got a name. You need to call people. My mom was the one that pushed me into it, to be honest. Wow. And I started making calls and sending songs around. And that started my, my songwriting career outside of Troop. And this, this producer engineer that I became close with, uh, Harvey Mason Jr., when he he went and worked with Dark Child after we kind of, you know, in the midst of me working with Troop, I was always in the studio working and doing other stuff. Right. And uh, me and Harvey became close. And Harvey went off and worked with Dark Child and ended up doing Michael and Tony and just all these different people. And he met a guy named Damon Thomas while he was doing that. And they decided to put together a writing team. Okay. And um, Damon went and got my buddy Jay Valentine and Harvey Mason came to get me. Like, if we're going to put a team together, I know exactly who I'm going to get. <laughs> so Harvey came to get me and that's how the underdog started. And and the rest was history. Once I separated myself from Troop and started writing songs, there was no negative energy. There was no, there was no, 
nothing against my talents and right. my creativity. I flourished writing songs. Right. So you was able to leave Troop and still maintain a, a, a good a, a good lifestyle. Yes, because I, you know, when I was in Troop, I stayed in the studio 24-7. So my work ethic was already there. Okay. So once once I was just dedicated to being a songwriter and not performing, that was a different focal point. Now I'm creating stuff from nothing. And I love that because Gerald, Gerald Levert and Chucky Booker did it to me. So, right. And I used to be blown away by Chucky and Gerald producing me and telling me what to sing. I thought that was amazing. Right. So once I did that and I got with the underdogs and that was just the focus, I was off to the races. Yeah, I had a very lucrative successful career as a writer with the underdogs it was the best decision i ever made in my life to do that and you know put myself out as a writer and build myself and build my repertoire as a writer it was it was a, a really good decision to do that and yes it was very successful right so uh, are you how is it now uh, touring with truth uh, it's fun. Uh, it's fun. I, I, I'm surprised that we don't work more. I'm surprised that uh, we're not booked a lot, but I appreciate the bookings that we do get. And it's fun, honestly. The crowd always gives us so much love. So in that moment, you get to relive your heyday. You know, you get to relive and get to feel that love because that stuff is addicting, man. When you're 19 years old, people crying and falling out and singing your songs, that shit's addicting, man. Right. You know, so at any chance to get a taste of that medicine, it feels good. You know, um, all the guys, we all get along really good. You know, there's no issues. Nobody's fighting and tripping. So now, nowadays, it's a lot of fun going out on the road. Um, you know, making our little money, whatever we do and coming back home, it's pretty cool. You know, I don't have any complaints. I just, where I am in my life, I just want to be in an energetically sound situation where there's no opposite momentum against the moving forward of it. Whatever I'm involved in, it has to be moving forward. You know, I'm just in that energy. So uh i'm like i said we don't get as get booked a lot so that's kind of you know it's not interesting but i kind of understand and then you know i'm in troop so i wish it was a little different because everybody's out working every weekend you know there's not a weekend where high five or h town or everybody's working everybody's working right. so you, you know, you have to look at yourself, you have to internalize and look and see what is it that troop is doing that blocks that, you know, what is the energetic disconnect that blocks us is. from that. What is that stopping you guys from getting, getting booked like the H towns and the high fives and things of that nature? Honestly, I think it's stagnant energy. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's, it's, it's a inside energetic thing like a person that hates themselves like say an individual is down on themselves and i don't mean down in a negative way per se but like if you don't feel the best about you or you don't have the best energy or best focus about you you're not gonna attract the best right and so i think i think that even now that troop is in good standing with each other, we all get along. I think that there was a lot of negative momentum created. Mm, okay. That is pretty tough to get past because the momentum is so strong, you know? Right. I, that's just what, that's just my personal belief. I believe that we have a, a stagnant energy somehow, some way that stops us to this day you know, touring is all that groups from the 90s have anyway. Right. So it has to be us that's stagnant in that area because promoters don't care. You know, Troop did well. You know, Troop is a great one of the best performance groups to ever come around. So it, it can't be the promoters against Troop. It has to be Troop against Troop unknowingly or something. It has to be some internal something. Right. Because your magnet attracts 
what it attracts. You get what I'm saying? It's right. inside, you know. I can't put my finger on it exactly, but I'll say it has to be some stagnant energy in some way from all of the shit that we've been through, man, you know? Saying, do you think there's space in, today, in, in today's climate for our boy bands and R&B? Yeah, so what, see, everybody's following. Everybody's following. There are not a lot of right. originators and people who are willing to be original anymore. So that's why you don't see boy bands because nobody's put boy bands out to make other people follow it. You get what I'm trying to say? Right. A new B2K was to can blow like the Migos, like an R&B Migos. You got to get that first, that first person, that, that first group will change that. But there's definitely room, you know. Right now in music, everybody's doing such one thing. There's a lot of room in R&B. There's a lot of room to do stuff. You know? What 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 R and B artists are you currently into right now that you're that you're currently listening to? Man, I love um, Lucky Day. Okay. I love Jasmine Sullivan. I love Lettucey. Um, I love Gibeon. Uh, Gibeon. Um, shoot, her. Okay. Um, you know, I, LMA. I mean, I, I like a lot of artists that are out right now. Um, um, I like a lot of artists right now. You know, uh, I really like Lucky Day, man. I, 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 I love, I love his vibe. I love. He reminds me of when I was young and excited about singing songs and how you try your best to just be so awesome performing on the song. Yeah. Like he gives me that, he gives me that hungry vibe, the the artist creativity hunger. Like, you know, I want to be great at this. You know, he gives me that vibe. So I really dig that. Right. It's crazy that you said that because I actually had my cousin, my uncle Bobby's son, Landon on here the other day. And he said the okay. same thing about Lucky Day. He said oh. Lucky Day was one of his favorite artists right now, too. Okay, yeah, I really I really like him. You know, I can't lie. He's the guy. I, I like him. So let me ask you this, man. How would, how did, you know, when it's all said and done for you, how do you, how do you want your legacy to be remembered, man? How do you? I want to be remembered as a person that didn't allow setbacks to hold him back. You know, I'm currently producing films. I have uh, two films out, two docu-films. Well, I have a series out, eight episode series out on Tubi called Day Ones. I have a troop documentary called Tales of a Boy Band that's unsung on steroids. Um, <laughs> um, so I, I wanna be, I want my legacy to be a person that didn't give up under circumstances where the, the normal person would give up. You know, I wanna, I want my legacy to be this guy. He created his ass off. He did everything that his heart felt uh, and was content with that part of it, you know, regardless of what the outcome was. You know, I created while I was here to bless people, to, you know, make people feel better. You know, I just want to be an example of believing in yourself, not giving up. You know, that's what I would want my legacy to be, not giving up and just totally believing in yourself, you know. Right. Um, did you ever step in the lane or do you, are you in that lane? Do you have any artists yourself that you're uh, managing or producing or uh, that you're looking to put out or anything of that nature? Oh, well, I'm producing my nine-year-old son, Rael. Okay. Um, he's, my, he's my latest project. I'm going to put all of the desire that I had to want to be this famous person i'm gonna put all of that into him okay. he's nine years old he's fresh and clean no damage no scars so i think that would be best fitting for my efforts as a creator right. to you know get get off of a troop that's been around for decades you know get away from that and work on something that's new and fresh that has no stigma to it in any kind of way 
And when I say get away from truth, I mean the thought process of producing truth at right. 52 and, you know, that right. thought, you know, get away from that. Work on the kid, you know what I'm saying? Make the kid hot. Uh, my nine-year-old is super talented. He produces music already, super good singer. So okay. the okay. smartest thing for me to do if I'm going to do music is to invest it in my son. Right. You know, and do that and give him an opportunity while he's a kid before he grows up to change, you know, to decide whatever he's going to be in his life. Right. You know, at least, you know, I put something in him at a young age and he experienced this young life of going viral or whatever he's getting ready to do, you know. Right. Right. Um, but my whole career I've, I've worked, I've had artists on and off, but I, I never... I was never able to get an uh, artist signed, um, no matter how much, uh, I just, I don't know. I never did have a Michael Bivens run with artists, Okay. you know? But I'm gonna tell you, Troop was always the, I always had this addiction to redeeming Troop. You know, I, I thought we were better than everybody. So it just, it hurt me that we did what we did to our own selves. And I just wanted to redeem that and make that better. <laughs> you know, like, right. I just, I don't know. It, it, to this day, the thought of that is still tough that I'm in my 50s now. You know, it's like, okay, Steve, come on, man. You know, it's tough, man. You know, it, it's you tough. It, do you find it hard sometimes to, to let it go? I still have it. I'm still touring with Troop, still going on the road with Troop, still. Right. So I haven't pulled a Lionel or Michael or a Raphael Sadiq yet, you know? Right. I'm still, I'm still going out making money with the fellas, you know? Um, and I don't know if that's a lack of self, lack of self-love, or I don't know what to call that, but I still haven't stepped away that's where you started it's just you just can't leave it alone well i'm gonna tell you I'm, I'm sure it's e you break it up a little bit steve I'm sure it's an ego god complex surrender can you hear me can you hear me now you can a little you hear me you're a little choppy i can't see that sucks can you hear me what about now you're better yeah you're better better yeah, you're better. Okay. Uh, yeah, I still haven't been able to let it go all the way, you know? Right. And, and, and I guess that's, you know, that's a part of my journey is finding that part of self and letting go of those God complexes that you have. It's almost like not trusting God or not trusting the universal force that we're under for, that everybody's going to be okay, you know? Could the, so that's, could the fans ever expect another true record? What do you think yeah. that's it? Okay. Yeah, I, I can't say that they can't because at any time when the guys want to get together and do something, I'm going to be down because I don't really have a hatred against true. You know what I'm saying? I kind of love the concept. So, and, and in the back of my mind, I always think, like I said earlier, I'm always thinking that all it's going to take maybe one song or get us back on the road where we're just working like crazy. That's just that optimistic kid still in me. But yeah, it, you know, if, if the fans are into hearing something new from Troop, yeah, I'm with it. But I don't think fans are interested in that, to be honest. I think, I think the fans love what they got from us and that's what they want to hear. You know, uh, we've released a lot of new music. Okay. You know, Troop, we have a lot of new songs. We got a... Um, compilation out right now called a baby makers we got a compilation called a b-sides we got a compilation called uh, uh the slow songs okay. you know we got a lot of compilations out and on each compilation there's new music um but when you're independent you're not as exposed to uh the people like you would if you had a budget behind you promoting you and stuff. So it, it, it might be just a case of the multitudes of our fans not even knowing that we have this that stuff out there, right. that is there. So that could definitely be it because like I said, we haven't been on a major label since 92, 93. Right. So, but 
Um, yeah, I'm not against, I love, I love the creative process. Like I said, I love Troop. So um, if, if I could have anything to do with Troop doing a great record, yeah, I would be down with that for sure. I'm not against that. But I'm more, honestly, I'm more focused on the side of me that needs to give myself all of that love and energy that I that, that I've given to truth. You, you know, I'm before I die, I want to experience a life where I gave that kind of energy to Steve and Steve's thing, like I'm doing with the movies. You know, right. I have two movies out, man. I just pick the camera up and start shooting, and I got two films out, you know. So it just shows me the universe is not against me whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? So is that you know? is that is, is, is filmmaking your new passion now? That's my new, when my mom transitioned, music kind of transitioned with it. Okay. You know, that hunger to want people to like my music, you know, writing songs to get on Chris Brown, writing songs, you know, that's just what I feel now. I could care less about that. Um, I love creating films. I love doing it the way that I'm doing it with my own ideas. I'm not cookie cutter, I'm not following, you know, of course, the opinions that you get from everybody around you is gonna be cookie cutter, like what they see everybody else doing. Right. But, you know, I'm, I'm doing it my way and I'm having a lot of fun and I got legs, you know, my, my, my series day ones, we just released season two that's on its way out and it's got legs, I'm, you know, it's like me being a songwriter, I had legs as a songwriter. I'm seeing that I have legs as a creator, regardless to what kind of creating that I'm doing, I can get legs. So I'm excited about that. You know, okay. I love, I love the moving forward process. I love, I love seeing something grow from nothing. That's the biggest, that's the biggest thrill that I have. You know, that's the, that's the biggest excitement that I have is watching something grow from nothing, you right. know? But yes, filmmaking is my new passion. Right. Sorry. I have, I have another. I have one last question for you. A couple more questions. But okay. I know that one of y'all biggest hits was a Jackson Five remake. Did you ever get the chance to meet Jackson Five or Michael Jackson? Yeah, I taught. You know, I met Michael Jackson when I was writing. I went to New York to write a song called "Why I Love You" for B2K. Okay. With my buddy, with my brother Troy Taylor, and I met Michael that day, and it was the best day of my life. Wow. Uh, I thought Michael was a real tall guy. He's not tall. I I thought that he, you know, you just don't know somebody that famous. You just you perceive they'll be a certain kind of way. And Michael Jackson was more humble than any other artist I've ever met. Wow. Okay. I'm telling you, energy is something else. Michael Jackson was more humble and meek than any, I've met artists that only had one hit that you couldn't even talk to. They were so cocky and so, you know, full of shit. You know, right. Mike, you know, it was such a, a big thing for me to meet him and he'd be so humble the way he was. It, it, it made me feel good about me being a humble guy. Right. You know, and not all extra, you know. Uh, if, Mike, if Mike can be that humble shit, how can how can you not be humble and you're a one hit wonder? Hey, and it's the same way with Beyonce. I met Beyonce. I know it's off the question, but I, I worked with Beyonce on Dream Girls, man, and I was so pleasantly surprised on how humble, nice, regular, and down to earth she was being the the, the queen of this shit. You know, I I, right. I I was so impressed by Beyonce. To this day, I haven't that impression upon me of how you're supposed to be when you're rocking out, you right. know, you, right. you're yourself. When you're solid in yourself, there's no air to put on. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. And that's the way Michael carried himself. There's no such thing as air on Michael, you right. know? Right. So I'm striving each day to be Steven, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, I met the other brothers. I talked to Jackie. He said, Michael called everybody in the family when All I Do came out. Said Michael was calling to just just panicked out but when I met Michael I was so starstruck that I didn't even tell him I was Steve from Troop <laughs> and he's and the whole time I'm gonna tell you something interesting the whole time when I met him he's looking at me trying to figure me you out who you are right because I had also I had just did three songs for Babyface for Michael's Invincible album I'm saying the demos for Kenny oh wow okay. and so 
when I was shaking Michael's hand and we were talking about the city, Michael's manager, John McClain, came in. And I know John because he was going to manage Troop after we left Atlantic. And so when John came in, he was like, Steve, what you doing here? He said, Michael, this is the guy that's singing Kenny's demos right here. And then Michael was holding my hand. He held my hand and he was really looking through his glasses, trying to figure out who is this dude, man? Yeah. You know, and I was just so, if you know me, you know, Michael Jackson was everything to me. So I was just, I, I, I could care less who I was, you know what I'm saying? It just didn't matter at that time. But yeah, I met Michael and it was the best experience I ever had in my life. That's cool, man. So Michael yeah. Jackson was one of the artists that you looked up to coming up. Period. Okay. Michael Jackson, Howard Hewitt, O'Brien, Melvin Riley. That was it, man. Michael Jackson was, I mean, I, I was famous for doing Michael Jackson as a kid, you know? Right. So Michael was that guy. Okay. You know, yeah. That's dope, man. Yes, so, sir. So let me ask you last question. Any, do you regret any moves you made or didn't make in your career? Uh, let me say first, so that the, let me say first, I totally appreciate my journey. Um, I know that the universal all that is does not care about the outcome. It's only about the journey and the lessons that we learn through the journey. So I'm satisfied and very grateful for my journey and the things that I've learned. But if there was moves that I had, if, if I could snap my finger and go back to a certain day, I would go back to the day where Alan said, hey, man, I just talked to Lewis. I set up this meeting with Lewis, man. We should go meet with him. I would say, no, you go meet with him. You go sign with him. We're going to stay where we are. The power will stay in the successful lane. We're not going to go to the outside of the business lane will stay there and I wouldn't have gotten married so soon I wouldn't I wouldn't have gotten married on top of my success you know my mother built me up and raised me because she wanted something successful she dreamed of being a singer and all these things and she poured all that into me and as soon as I became this thing I got married made wrong decisions in my career it's like went haywire you know, so those things I would have changed a little bit. I would still like all of my children, but I would have them later. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I would have did it a little later, but the decision in my music career, in my career that I worked and dreamed so hard for, I would go back and take away all those decisions. I would stay on the road, stay in the studio and stay successful. Right. Sounds good, man. I want to tell you, man, it is an honor to have you on, bro. You're my first. Thank you. You're my first celebrity guest on the show, man. I appreciate Thank you so you, man. much, man, for for coming on and giving me your time, brother. Well, at least at least I make history with the show, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I'm on, man. Uh, my film company is called Black Box Original. Okay. Uh, and we're releasing shit, man. I'm 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 getting my Spike Lee wet. Period. That um, Stephen so Stephen Tarantino Lee. <laughs> thank you again for having me bro i appreciate you a lot man yes sir thank y'all for tuning in and comments man let us know what's up what y'all think about the interview subscribe and like and we'll be back at y'all next time i just released my new solo album called gots to be please go and download the new album uh tell them about the new the, the, uh, the what you got on Tubi too plug that okay um, I have day ones. Please go and check out day ones on Tubi's eight episode series like uh, Snow and the Bluff Menace to Society season two coming soon. And I also have Tales of a Boy Band, the story of Troop on Tubi right now. It's a five episode series where each guy gets to tell his own story in their own individual documentaries within the one. Uh, and it's, it's pretty awesome. You got to check it out, man. I definitely and I'm, it my out. new album is called Got to be Stephen Russell Hart's Got to be. Go download it, check it out. Some good music on there. And you got that on Apple Music? I yes. That? Okay. Yes. Yes. I'll make sure y'all go to Tubi and check my man out. Make sure y'all go check the music out on Apple Music. And y'all make sure y'all keep supporting, man. Thank y'all for tuning yes. in. Till next time, brother. Much love, brother. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yes, sir.